that's a short story. Paul and I arrived home from Hawaii, broke, pregnant, well shit was. I figured I'd uh, borrow 500 bucks, which I did, from a finance company, used that to buy a car, then went to a bank and borrowed another 500 bucks with the car as collateral to rent the house that we rented in Brookvale and started. So we lived in the back, turned the front room into a shaping bay. So it was eight a week, then it was 12, and then it was 20, and then it was ridiculous. I shaped eight. Took my Chris Crazy to, sh to um, glass. And that was so different to everything, what everyone was shaping. And Chris looked at me and went, you'll never sell them. You know, that fired me up. <laughs> How good was Terry Fitzgerald as a surfer shaper? Because from my angle, no matter how I say it, I'm going to come across biased because he gave me my first ever break. I am what I am today because of Terry Fitz. 73 to 75, just through what was coming out as a finished product, people could see into that. This was Terry Fitzgerald. And my goodness, were there some beautiful, deep surfboards that he built. And the public was ready for that. Not everyone was just a drug crazed moron. There were a lot of artistic people just in love with the spirituality of the sport.
those first five years were just were incredibly tough, not only to survive monetarily, because you know we'd spent two thousand dollars to go to South Africa to win five hundred dollars first prize. You know, like that's how ludicrous it was. That was the why, really. It was just it wasn't so much economics; it was survival. But surviving through that period made it possible for for what professional surfing is today. trip up the coast was was magic and that was like my first proper you know HB trip you know go up with the boys with the law with Poda yeah just um 10 days of um scoping out perfect point waves like I've been going up to um you know the north coast and doing trips for 18 years since yeah that's uh, the most magic I've ever had it you know just everywhere we went you know everywhere we turned up it was it was beautiful Everywhere we're turning up, especially like because I was a, I was a couple of years younger than the other guys. Yeah, I was just like jumping out of my skin, going surfing with you know with Poto and the Law. Just being around that energy and um, getting all the points on was yeah, it was magic.
an amazingly, you know, unique experience um, going to Samboa. Basically, you know, six months, you know, after the first guys have um, surfed it and just, you know, the village was still embracing, you know, the whole, you know, seeing surfers for the first time, checking it all out, especially at Periscopes, you know, we, we got that incredible. There was no um, Losmans up at um, Lakey Peak. It was just, you know, the one little Losman and, and that was it down at Periscopes. Yeah, we had it to ourselves. It was just incredible. David on a 6.6 or a 6.5 chop square was just incredible and um, you know the, the sessions he did it had at uh, Summer Cloud Bay down the south coast on a chop square mindless. When you see Poto at the points there, that forehand cutback action, 
Yeah, it's real reminiscent of Crammy, you know, and I don't know whether he, he picked that up back in the day when Crammy went over to Tahiti for a few um, photo shoots and that. You'd have to ask Poda. <laughs> yeah, there's certainly um, some resemblance there from that commitment to rail and that, um, that cutback action going on. The company is a good company. Like they've always, they've remained small, and I think that's a good thing. I don't know whether that's through his own choice or through just what's happened, but I think it's a good thing that they're small and they're a family company.
I think with HB, um, what it's about is um, the surfboards. That's been the heritage from, from day one. TF being a, you know, a surfer shaper, kept that you know, as, a real, as a real company in surfing, and that's evolved through the years. I surf the way I surf because of my old man, absolutely. When I was riding my old man's boards, when I first got started, it was a simple process. He gave me a single fin, and that was the board that I had to surf for a year or two. And that's, I think that's why my style is the way it is. in another le level. If you really watch it, what they're doing, uh, it's as good as anything that's ever gone on. What Kai and Joel have done in the water in heavy waves, as heavy as anybody has surfed, um, I reckon they're doing the same thing. The opportunity came up and it was the right time for me to sort of step out and challenge myself and Mavericks was first place on my card so that was it.
Joel is just one of my favourite people to go surfing with. And every surfer has someone like that, that they love to surf with, that just makes surfing a little bit more special. That's what Joel is to me. I absolutely just love having him in the water with me when I'm surfing. You know, it's, you don't have to worry, worry about a thing in the world when Joel's out in the surf with you, except that he's gonna take the very best waves the whole session. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. So it's, it's kind of nice because usually I, I go there by myself and it's just solitude and, and uh, Jeffrey's is a nice place off season because you know, it's just a small country town and nobody bugs you and go for a surf. The 30 year thing you know, was something after the, you know, that wasn't planned. It was what was more planned was um, to get there um, you know, at the right time of the month with the moon and uh, tides and all the rest of it. Yeah, you know, the fact that it was 30 years later is kind of incidental. But all of us going there together was awesome because you know, just having having the boys and Paul in there. I guess you know, experiencing why I go there. Because you know, like, I've been there so many times without anybody. So that was nice, yeah. The trip to J Bay was pretty cool. Because it was. It was more about a family trip rather than a, a surf trip where you got to get footage or you got to get photos. It was just, um, and again, I was surfing with TF and Joel, and it was just surfing single fins without having to worry about performance or. Yeah, there was moments in the water where waves just came to us and we were just in a really great place. It was a good time.
Well, that was the best thing about it, is we were board, the boards just surf themselves. One of the, the best waves to surf Terry's boards is at J Bay. We couldn't go wrong. There was no section we couldn't make <laughs> out there. I mean, it was pretty good to get on the boards on a wave that some of the boards were specifically shaped for, away from the beaches. I don't know. I, I think the boards go good in any waves anyway. That was a bit of a surprise, wasn't it? We took too, too long to get out there though. We should have been out there earlier. TF took us to the wrong car park. <laughs> That's the one thing that I remember about that session, is thinking, damn, I wish we were here two hours or an hour earlier, because it turned off pretty quick. But we were lucky we got the waves that we got out there, that's for sure. So rare. Once in seven years it's broken like that.
When did that happen? Oh. Took us on a wave down here. Little one. And the front was all wobbling around, so I thought, oh, I better like just top down onto my knees and, and lay down and go in. And I topped down onto my knees, <laughs> and the whole front just went boom <laughs> in the front of my face. Mm. Snapped off. Can't believe it. First board I get off TF in like two years. Oh, my board car. Never mind. No. I was riding the 20. In the last one anyway. That's why I was doing that big side slip. I was going sideways. So how, how was that session, boys? Oh, it was alright. I was dodging the barrel. There was a consolation, you know, it was raining, we need Joel caught up. It wasn't much. In the credits. People can adapt and they perhaps need to respect how grand this guy was in his prime, a bit like oh, Jesus, Muhammad Ali or Michael Jordan in being able to have a wave on a string.
pride comes into it, but um, it's respect more than anything. The, the respect and the pride is what I have for them, not what they have for me. And Terry treated me like a son, and uh, I still look at him as a father. He, uh, he gave me everything and wanted very little in return. That's pretty, pretty major. To be asked by Terry to come down and, and get a board done was, was as good as it gets, because he was as good as it gets. I think Terry to uh, Sunset and to Jeffrey's Bay and the Bells, Big Bells, was what Lopez uh, achieved at Pipeline. You'd know that it was originally meant to be hot buttered salt, but he couldn't fit it on the sticker. <laughs> Strange thing is, that's exactly what Terry's boards give you. Here is an inanimate object giving me soul. And it's a blowout of a feeling. No surfer on today's tour can get that. What those guys didn't realise, of course, is that we were all watching, looking at you know, Stesic's skate mags to check out what those guys were doing off the pool lips. He was going using the skaters as a reference to, you know, take Where our surfing to somewhere else. Yeah, that's good. Back to front. Well, the good thing about those days is that everybody, everybody had a different approach. Yeah. And because guys were shaping their own boards, they could shape their boards to take them where they wanted to go. And then their boards would add to what they wanted to do style-wise. So the shapers really had an advantage because they could develop their own equipment, and you know, guys were a lot more multifaceted in that they, you know, they could shape and surf their equipment. Up the north coast, and we got that epic cyclone session. You know, um, the law and Pato pulled out these um, jump sets, and I was just going, "You guys are kidding, aren't you?" You know, the full package action going on, and um, straight away whipped them on, and they were. Um, Tearing it up in them, you know, so it was pretty classic. Short boardies and the um, the bright weddies were as um, as game as I got. I used to work packing boxes out the back. The joke the other night, I was on the B team, which was the box team out the back. But you still had a job there working for them, so that was good. Like Terry shaped the boards right, and they were incredible shapes. But I reckon that Martin captured the imagination of people with what he put on them. A complete work of art from, from Terry shaping it to Martin finish spraying it to the glasses doing their work on it, you know. I think they were unique in the 70s and I still think they're unique now. All of them, you know, like they're all, you know, Joel and Kai are just my mates, but like Terry and Paul and I just have respect for them, just like any other people that you grow up with and they don't burn you, like you respect them. And, and I was watching that film and just, Realising how much I did respect it, you know, and realising how much, realising how much of um, it is in your life, you know, that that guy's given you, you know, and whether you know it or not, he's just given it to you, you know.